There's a well-known verse in Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Now, there's a fair bit of discussion about what those words fearfully and wonderfully made actually mean. But I think the idea behind them is this, that um, we are made so distinct from the other creatures, it's impossible that we're simply the um, latest in the evolutionary chain. The ability to communicate, to think abstract thoughts, a sin consciousness, a God consciousness, uh, a, an awareness of others, a, uh, a, an ability to love people, uh, creativity, memory, imagination. These are all things that distinguish us from the other creations. And when God gave Adam the privilege of naming the animals, he was saying something, that Adam was superior to the animals, and he was going to be a steward over the animal creation. Now, this is a big idea in the Bible. What is the difference between a man and an animal? And we see that in the book of Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar starts acting like an animal, so God says you might as well live like one for a while. And he ends up being hobbled in his royal garden, eating grass like an ox. And finally, he says, now I know there's a God in heaven. And those who exalt themselves, he's able to abase. So man has this location between God and the brute creation, and he's lower than the angels, but he's certainly higher than the animals. And uh, we, of all creatures, have the ability to know God and love God and praise him. So even though we are little tiny creatures with little tiny brains in this little body on this little planet off in the corner of God's universe, still we have this capacity to think God's thoughts. And we have the ability to love God with our hearts and minds. So the psalmist is saying we have evidence within ourselves that there's a God in heaven because he's put his image upon us. I was the first generation that got to see our children born in the hospital. Before that, my father's generation, they waited in the waiting room. They didn't get to see their kids born. In order for us to have that privilege, we had to take these prenatal classes with our wives. And um, the nurse that gave us the course, she came into the room the first day. She wrote her name up on the board, and then she turned and looked us deadpan in the face and said, I am an atheist. But every time I see a baby born, I have to fight real hard to be an atheist. <laughs> Later on, I said to her, stop fighting. The evidence is overwhelming. Even in man's ability to think God's thoughts, to fellowship with God, to worship God, to praise him, he realizes that we are fearfully, that is, distinctively made and made with a God consciousness. We are wonderfully created. But to think that there would be two cells, one from the man, one from the woman, that would produce not simply protoplasm, but a creature that is aware of the supernatural, aware of the spiritual, and is able to actually, if born again, be restored to fellowship with God. So this is a beautiful verse, and as, as I think of uh, how God has put us together, the marvels of his creation, I'm reminded again to regularly praise him for the capacity he's given us to know him, enjoy him, serve him, please him, and praise him.